Please staff with us, the victorious Arkansas Razorbacks headed to the Sweet 16. Please welcome uh, head coach Eric Musselman and athletes uh, Ricky Council and Devontae Davis. Congratulations, coach. Your thoughts on the game? Uh, I mean, we're celebrating back there because we have such incredible uh, respect for Kansas, uh, defending champions, uh, MVP of their league, and, and number 10, Jalen Wilson. And uh, they're a hard, hard, hard team to prepare for. Uh, didn't play as good a defense as we normally do, but we really wanted to, to, to create more pace in the second half and certainly did that, scoring 45 points. And, and then the clutch free throw shooting by Ricky, 10 of 11 in the game. The second chance points uh, was a big part of, of, of our win today. Uh, Kamani, six offensive rebounds, 10 rebounds. And then the play of Devo Davis taking the ball to the basket in middle pick and roll. Uh, his defense all game, and then once he fouled out, we were able to, uh, you know, win. And the uh, the offensive rebound uh, off the missed free throw was 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 incredible. Questions for the coach or student athletes? Please raise your hand. Going to go on the right side, coach, on the aisle. Uh, hey, coach. I know yesterday you mentioned that you wanted to really have someone attached to, to Grady Dick the whole time. He was sort of a non-factor scoring wise. He did well with the boards, but how are, did you assess your defense's effort stopping him? Yeah, we just wanted to give uh, no airspace, uh, you know, obviously to, to number four, uh, Grady Dick. He's an incredible shooter, one of the best shooters in college basketball. And, uh, you know, the, the, the f general philosophy was not to allow three-point attempts. That was the biggest thing is to stay attached. And that's also why, you know, they did a good job, I thought, of exploiting uh, us hugging up on him by their, their middle pick and roll and their flip screen because uh, Adams got some, some easy baskets inside, and we fouled him a few times off that roll, but we just didn't have a tag man uh, because we did not want, um, you know, Grady to, 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 to see any daylight. Um, you know, we felt like if we could hold him to four or five three-ball attempts that it, would, that, that it would play to our advantage. Again, please help the transcriber with your name and affiliation. We're going to go on the aisle here. Thank you. Yeah, Bob, Bob Holt, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Um, Eric, you alluded to that crazy play. I mean, you know, you don't want Ricky to miss a free throw, but it turns out you get it back and he hits two. Um, could you elaborate on that a little bit? And then, Ricky, could you kind of go through it? I mean, you, you miss it, but then you, you get the ball and you get two more free throws. Go ahead, Rick. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, obviously I didn't want to miss. Spent off. I think Jordan Hustle got a tip, and I remember it tipping off of Jalen Wilson and coming right to me. And I was like, mm, either I can attack this because I was literally at the free throw line when I got it or I could pull it out. So I just decided to attack. I knew worst case scenario, I'll probably get fouled if I wasn't gonna make it. So and then I made both of those. So then I think it was up three after that. Yeah, I just, I mean, I, I, I would have to go back, Bob, and watch the tape because I was thinking about what we needed to do at the defensive end, whether Ricky made it or missed it. So that was going through my mind. I had called a couple of the guys that were, were not lined up on the three throw line to explain what we wanted to do as far as switching on dribble handoff, switching on pick and roll coverage. Um, and, then, and then I think it was Jordan or Kamani, one of those guys kept the thing alive. And, and uh, we talk all the time about pursuing loose balls like a defensive back in football, and you have to wrestle it away from, uh, from a wide receiver. And, and uh, that was kind of a scrum, and we did an incredible job of, of, uh, of just kind of willing and squeezing the ball. Maybe you and Devo, the second straight year, Arkansas has knocked off a number one seed. I think before that, 0 for 10. It's hard to do, obviously. What does it mean to you? What was the key today? Did you feel like it, Eric and then Devo? Well, I've been coaching a long time. That's, that's as great a win as I've ever been a part of. Um, again, because of the, the history of Kansas, because of uh, some of their veteran players that were part of a championship team last year. Um, you know, a lot of people didn't think we were going to win our first round game. And uh, I've, I've continued to tell the guys internally, and I've continued to tell the staff uh, that we are a team that continues to get better. That just doesn't happen this time of year. But because of all the circumstances that have happened, uh, we're still evolving. We're still adding offensive plays. We're still adding defensive coverages. Um, we're an evolving basketball team. I feel fortunate that, the, that these guys really buy into the prep. I mean, we, we went hard preparation-wise. These guys did not have hardly any time off between our last game. And then I didn't want to come shoot today. Not many teams shot today. They gave up their, their, their practice time. Um, 
And so I told him, hey, guys, let's just do a walkthrough and film. I can walk you through what, what we need to. And these guys, Devo and these, Ricky, they stood up and said, no, coach, we're go, we're, we want to go to the gym. And I said, well, I'm worried about legs and all. They said, nope, it wasn't even my decision. It was their decision. And uh, it was beneficial. We, we used all our allotment time today in the shoot-around. I thought that really helped us. Yes, sir. Um, just to pick you off, Coach Mutz, um, like you said, um, it's a wonderful win. It feels unreal right now. Um, I don't even know how to react, you know, but I know it does feel good. And I know the guys that haven't been a part of something like this, um, I know this feel like we're at the top of the world. And we want to continue to, and get better. Like Coach Mutz was saying, um, we're not done yet. And I think we could continue to get better um, as the season continues to go on. We're going to take a Zoom question. We have a question from Dan Tortora. Dan, when you're ready. Yep. Dan Tortora, wakeupcalldt.com. Coach, uh, you guys made it to the Sweet 16, but your shirt didn't make it. Just what you can say about the celebration that you had with the fans and, and just the emotion that goes through you knowing that you have these guys on the team. Well, I'm, 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 I would love to uh, lie and say that, you know, I felt composed. Um, but this, I mean, we only led for a minute 43, and uh, this has been as, as challenging and up and down season as I've ever been a part of. And uh, for these guys to be rewarded for sticking with it and being able to go to Las Vegas and, and, and participate with only six team, teams still standing, it's, it's really hard to make this tournament. It's really hard to win a game in this tournament. It's really hard to beat the defending champions, number one seed. Um, we did it. Uh, proud of us. Uh, get on this plane tonight, and we'll start prepping. Uh, tomorrow, as soon as I think the game's at 5:15, the team that will play, um, and we'll we'll start, you know, prepping for that tomorrow night um, as a staff, and and uh, see what happens. We have six minutes left in the press conference. You're going to go on the right side and right in front of you, sir. There you go. And we'll come over to the left side. Congratulations, Chad Taylor from Cumulus Media here in Des Moines. I just want you guys to talk about the fan base because that electricity in that arena with your fan base was out of control, like something I've never seen in a long time. So if you could, for both Devontae and, and Ricky, just talk about what that fan base means to you and how many people traveled here to Des Moines to help cheer you guys all. I mean, really cheer you on to that last second. Start with Ricky first and Devontae. Yeah, um, to be honest, I really saw a lot of Kansas fans. I mean, I saw our section on the right side of, on the court, but – I really just, it was like our section and it was like blue all the way around them. Mm -hmm. But they were loud though. And um, I noticed that we had more fans when we, um, we was leaving the hotel to come to the gym and they were supporting us leaving the hotel. So I'm glad they came out and I hope they come out to Vegas too. Yeah, um, it's, it's amazing seeing all the fans come out. Um, my mom wasn't even gonna come and I, um, I told her, I said, come on down, you know? She drove down, it was like seven hours. And so she came down, I'm glad she got to experience this. Um, and and just with the um, just right there with all the other fans, I'm glad they all came down and supported us. You know, um, it's exciting. Um, like I've been saying it and been saying it to the team as well. Like everybody don't get this opportunity, so let's take full advantage. And I think the fans are doing it as well by coming and traveling and and using their money and things like that to um, be able to come and, and support us. Um, 100%. I'm glad and thankful for them to come, and I know the rest of the team is. And I'm speaking for, for all of us. Um, and I want to thank the fans as well. You go on the left side and then we're... Uh, Devontae, you had 21. Uh, Adam Teicher, ESPN. You had 21 in the second half. A lot of them were contested shots. Maybe all of them were. The way you guys were struggling to score in the first half, did you feel like you needed to take the game over at that point? Um, not really. Just playing with the playing within the flow. Um, Coach Must said, get down here. And he was talking within the entire group. And so um, I he feel... He needed to take over. He needed to take over. I feel, I feel that we all... We all <laughs> did something to, to help us win, and um, I'm glad we did that. Um, Ricky knocked down big free throws. We had Nick come in and, and play really good defense at the end of the game. And so I think everybody contributed because must even sub the right way and things like that to help us. And so I think everyone, um, even the coaches and the team, contributed in some type of way to help us win. On the right side, and then we'll come across the aisle. Uh, Will Kennedy, Des Moines Register. Ricky, uh, once Devo filed out, you sort of took up the mantle there. Kamani had a nice fadeaway, but you sort of made all the other points after that, I believe. Did you feel a need to step up once he wasn't in the game anymore? Yeah, um, Devo pretty much had the whole second half. I mean, I was on in the first half. Devo had the second half. 
And I was fine with that. I was just in the corner ready to rebound if he missed, but he wasn't missing. And then coach, when he fouled out, looked at me and he wanted me to take the road that Devo had. And um, I was just trying to make the right play. I think only missed one shot out of that. And mm -hmm. Kamani got that rebound and put it back up. And the other than that, I was getting fouled. So mm -hmm. I'm just glad he had the confidence in me and we pulled through. 21 for 26. What's that John Daly text going to look like when you get back to the locker room? Really good. They tried calling me. Um, <laughs> got a couple texts already. Um, before we hit the plane, I'll try to call John. And You know, I mean, he's he's been texting me even drills like he wanted our guys to get a putter out and hit a ball into a cup. So I continue. I, we haven't tried it yet. Um, luckily, we've been making foul shots. But um, I know uh, the state of Arkansas is on fire right now. Ooh. And I know John Daly's pretty pumped up, too. Mm-hmm. Eric, uh, Bob Holt, Arkansas Democrat, is that? Um, what did you think about Devo's games? He's had a lot of good games for you, but to do it on this stage, you guys were down by 10 in the first half. Um, just what did you think of his game and how he came through? And then Ricky, like uh, this guy said, really took over. I think he scored seven of your last nine. And then Kamani's, uh, I know there's a lot of stuff. Kamani's tip, kind of like San Diego State game, but maybe even bigger, just the, the impact of that. Yeah, Kamani's got an incredible nose for the basketball and comes up big in, in, in clutch situations. And, um, you know, there's, there's been good matchups. You know, we've, we've, we've stuck with the same lineup the last two games. I think he had a really good matchup um, with his reaction and nose for the ball. Um, you know, we were disappointed in the first half. Um, you know, we didn't go to the basket. We didn't get downhill. We settled. We took five threes, like, in the first three and a half minutes. That was not the game plan, but sometimes – uh, when you're open, um, you know, you got to take those. And, and uh, we ran a, 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 a middle pick and roll uh, with Devo p predominantly in, in, in the second half. And then, and then Ricky took over. Uh, much like Ricky did uh, in Maui, we ran, you know, we got away from it a little bit. But he had four assists tonight, too. So uh, I think his, his point guard ball handling skills are somewhat underrated. When we have put him in pick and rolls, he's been extremely effective. And then Devo... Uh, with his snake dribble going right, coming back left, swinging hook shot um, mm -hmm. off the wrong foot. Pretty amazing, but he kind of does it all the time. Final question in the back row. Yeah, Eric, uh, Adam Kilgore with the Washington Post. Uh, three straight Sweet 16s, to a chance to get to uh, three Elite Eights in a row. What's the common thread? Why has this program become uh, so good during March? <laughs> really good players. Um, you know, you can't, you can't win – at any level, uh, CYO, grade school, high school, college, pro, G League, national team, unless you have really good players, you're not going to win. And we have really good players. We have guys that have uh, insane buy-in, um, incredible buy-in. I mean, we, like I said, we're, st <laughs> we're still practicing today with the short turnaround and an early game, and guys have played a lot of minutes, but, you know, they felt like, going on the floor today would help them or put them in a better position to win. So I, I feel really fortunate uh, to coach this team, last year's team, high character guys that, that, that hate to lose and really compete and, you know, start a conference play. It didn't look good for, for us. And we kind of hung around and, and won some big games and, and, and lost some really tough games against some really good competition. We just told everybody, stop, don't listen to the noise. You know, worry about what's going on internally in this locker room and let's just keep getting better. And like I said, I thought our Illinois game was as good as game we played. I thought tonight in the second half, we played as good as any game we have all year. Congratulations, guys. Best of luck in the regional. Thank you.